on YouTube, fam. It's your boy Tony Two Times, and we back with another episode of Hood Tales, man. Before I start, be sure to tap that like button. Watch this video to the end and hear the full story and all the details in the case. It's a lot of information in this video, so y'all try to keep up with me. It's a requested video. Y'all been wanting me to do this, so I did my research. So we're going to get into it. But for the day one fam, y'all already know it's all love. Thanks for tuning back into another episode. If you're new to the channel and you're feeling the content, feel free to subscribe. Definitely hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time we drop a new video and share the channel with your peoples. Let's get right into it. As we all know, our environment plays a big part on how we think, how we move, and how we view the world. What you see when you open your front door every day will more than likely mold you into the person you will later become in life. I remember I want to say like 2011, me and my little cousin was riding around. I was driving and he cut a song on. It was Chief Keith. Us being from Baltimore, Maryland, I was like, who is yo? He explained to me they were hoppers or shorties from Chicago and all were in gangs. I was about 24 years old at the time. And at first, I was like, the music cool, but it's not really my vibe. I was used to music from Chicago like Twister, Do or Die, Crucial Conflict, even Kanye or Common. But when I went home, cut on YouTube, I found myself going down a rabbit hole of music videos and rappers from all sides. On what seemed to be something that was about to be big. Then came the name Drill Music. Me coming from the trenches myself, I understood the pain and emotions and over the years i separated all the dissing of the dead focused on the artistry and started to rock with certain individuals not because of what gang they were in but because of their story and me wanting to see everybody win and make it out them streets but eventually i noticed it seemed like a lot of death came along with the music it was a catch-22 their way of getting out the field was also backfiring to them getting hit in the field, leaving a long lasting effect to a city with so much talent. And on this episode of Hood Tales, we'll be taking it to Chicago, Illinois to discuss the history behind the brazen hit of Chicago rapper FBG Duck. Carlton Weekly, or FBG Duck, was a rapper from the south side of Chicago that first hit the scene back in the mid 2000s with him and his guys who called themselves FBG or Flyboy Gang. The section of Chicago they were rapping was 63rd and St. Lawrence. A mixture of different gangs, but a lot of GDs. Or for y'all that might not know what that is, Gangsta Disciples. Just like most gangs, the GDs were founded back in the day by their chairman, Larry Hoover, and was about the elevation and growth of their community, or the black community. GD meaning growth and development. I won't get too deep into the history, but eventually certain sets branched off and started doing their own thing as certain gang chiefs wasn't seeing eye to eye. And what started as one with the GDs was split to two with David Boxdale starting the Black Disciples or BDs. Eventually the feds came in as they noticed the power and structure the gangs had over their community. And just like the old saying goes, cut off the head and the body will fall. And that's exactly what happened. As leaders and chiefs went to prison, it left the gangs with no structure. Then just like in my city and all cities over America, they came in and tore the projects down, which most of the time is located in prime real estate parts of town. The gangs that already had a stronghold on these buildings were forced to relocate to the blocks with other gangs that already had what they had going on. Some mixed in and got along, but others felt they wasn't willing to share territory and war started. Duck and his neighborhood became the product of the lost leaders and buildings coming down. With no structure, the shorties cling to each other in their neighborhoods. That was all they had. All the kids, they attended the same schools and hung together at first. But as they all got older, whatever gang their neighborhood was associated with, they all were forced to pick a side. It started off with fighting, seeing each other on a bus or out and about and throwing hands. But it quickly went from that to guns as the young men and women that used to be cool had to survive the Chicago streets. 
Fast forward a little bit, the city would gain hope when a young dread-headed rapper named Chief Keith would start dropping music with a sound that the world never heard before and a lingo that was different. He was talking about ops, 30s, thoughts, and sliding through enemy turf. And he would often say O Block and this Tuka game. As Chief Keith got a deal, blew up, and left Chicago, more of the youth around the world became fascinated on what he was talking about. A op being an opposition or opposite. Someone who opposes you or your squad. A 30, a gun with an extended clip. That, a loose female. But what really caught was O Block and Tuka Gang. O Block is an area in Chicago, or you could say apartments or projects, where Keith claimed that was mostly BD or Black Disciples. Once everyone figured out his side or what gang he was associated with, they wanted to know who he was talking about sliding on and smoking. At first, the world didn't know Tuka or Shondell Gregory was a 15-year-old boy from Chicago. He had moved to St. Lawrence and became close friends to FBG Duck and the rest of Flyboy Gang. He lost his life at that young age to gang violence on a bus stop. As the BDs now had a voice in the music industry, FBG Duck didn't like the fact their friend was being dissed almost in every song. So Duck, Young, Dutchie, Cash would start rapping their homie Tuka in their area, St. Lawrence, and making music under Flyboy Gang or the Clout Boys. In earlier videos, a slim, lanky duck could be seen with short dreads, rapping, and talking about his life. Around about this time, you had a bunch of shorties from Chicago that wanted to rap their hood or gang as well. Lil Jojo, Brick Squad, Rondo Number no. 9, E-Day, LA Capone 600, Lil Herb, and Bibby, No Limit, the list goes on and on. As they all seen music as an outlet or way to honor their fallen friends and make it out of Chicago. But the music quickly became a way for groups to go back and forth about who got the most bodies or who was up on the scoreboard, who has the most guns or who was sliding and shooting the most. Almost like a game. It didn't make matters any better when one year Chicago became the murder capital with more bodies dropping than the actual war in Iraq, giving them the nickname Chirac. All the young men rapping and claiming their games were teenagers, some as young as 13, 14 years old. The world became fascinated at the levels of violence in the Chicago way of life. Unfortunately, things would escalate as rappers started losing their lives for dissing the other side, making East Side want revenge for their fallen soldiers. Even the ones that wasn't rappers. With too many names to name, it became a war with the internet and YouTube becoming invested on who was winning or who would get hit next. Even DJ Academics started a segment called The War and Shot Rack, giving rappers and their associates nicknames and saying who had the most bodies or who was more gangster or savage. To the world, it was entertainment, but to the kids in Chicago, this was real life. Duck would become one of the most known rappers from his side and in the city. And minus sometimes dissing, he had real talent. Another group was also on the rise, Team 600, who were closely affiliated with O Block, also known to have a lot of BDs located on 64th and King Drive in the south side of Chicago. Their rappers at the time were L.A. Capone, E Day, Rondo Number no. 9, also having fallen comrades. They would diss other gangs and areas they felt were dissing them. Before you knew it, E Day and Duck were in a rap beef. Now 63rd were trying to defend their name with two groups of BDs. The crazy thing was, all their neighborhoods were blocks away from each other. With the BDs now making money, having successful members, things would go a step further. As we all know, you need money for war. And now, it was definitely a war. 63rd had members like Jakara Bonds or K.I. As many of y'all know, later be called the female assassin or FBG Butter, who most know from being an original FBG member, hitter, and also close to Duck, even having kids with his sister. As St. Lawrence tried to keep their circle tight in the family, they also had ties to other hoods like MOB, Jaro City, 051 Young Money, and as members from all sides lost their lives, the hitters and known faces became big targets. 
FBG had a person from the opposite side they often dissed as well, who lost their life. O.D. Perry, on which O Block was named after. It was rumors on members from their side allegedly doing a hit on O.D. And one name would become infamous, K.I., who at first was a regular young lady. And after losing close friends to the beef, including a young man named Taekwon, she vowed to get revenge and slide on all her ops. It's a lot of information that most of you already know, so I will skip around. As years went by, the war got deeper. L.A. Capone from 600 lost his life, leaving a recording studio, and members of 051 Young Money were convicted of that, causing two more 600 members to allegedly slide. C-Day and Rondo, hitting a person they thought had something to do with L.A. They both were convicted of that hit and sent to prison. A 051 Young Money member named Lowell Mark was hit at the distant falling O Block and 600 members, and bodies from East Side kept falling. All the talent was being overshadowed by the war. A big name from O Block was a young man named Troy or T Roy, a short dude known to carry a big gun and get active. The same way KI was on the war path for her guys, T Roy was as well. T Roy's best friend was another old block member named King Vaughn. Vaughn would go in and out of jail often with fighting serious charges, a lot of them being gun charges or hits. On one of his charges, he would get found not guilty and another man named O Block Big Mike would be convicted and take the time. Mike was the big brother to an FBG main member that also was known to get active, named FBG Wooski. Vaughn felt like Mike told on him about the hit and held the grudge. Eventually, after a lot of back and forth hits, some big names in the war lost their lives. Even some of the main hitters from East Side, even K.I. and T-Roy, which Vaughn was locked up when T-Roy died and vowed to get revenge no matter what. It was speculated T-Roy was hit walking in the store after being spotted by Duck's big brother, FBG Brick, who then made a call to a young man named T.B who allegedly then hit T-Roy, which was a big loss for O-Block. But Troy had a little brother and other members of O-Block that didn't want to let that go, including King Vaughn, who even from jail let it be known his guys need to do something about the situation. This would allegedly be the starting point of what we are leading up to. O-Block would start calling themselves Get Back Gang, and one by one catching anybody that had something to do with one of their top members being hit, including TB, who lost his life. And in the tragic double hit, Brick and a man named Kobe Mack, who was Duck's big brother and big cousin, will both be shot on their block by a car full of shooters. Duck now had a choice to make. His music was taken off, but in the streets, he was taking big losses. But the L made him regroup and get stronger and also go harder, making his hit song slide. Telling any ops, stop talking. If you're going to do something, do it before we do it. This song would give him the boost he needed to go mainstream. Because FBG felt, even though their music was good, they were being blackballed by the industry because of big names with the BDs like Dirk and Sosa. Now talking to labels and getting money, Duck's fame was long overdue. But there was one problem. He was still in Chicago. With all the bloodshed, and him now being a top target because of his affiliation and success and the Vlad TV interview where he talked about his life, how much he went through. He was then asked, why don't you just leave Chicago? The young man stated that's where he feels comfortable. That's where his kids at, his mother, family, and everything he knows. He stated he knows how to move in his city and you can be hit anywhere in any other state. Shortly after his success, big name for the BDs would come from under that cell, Kane Vaughn, who now free, decided to start rapping himself, and in typical Chicago fashion, go at his main ops, which was 63rd. He would diss Tuka in every song, let it be known he wasn't from 63rd, and the BDs was up in the money and in the streets. Duck would take an approach of being passive, even making a song called Chicago Legends giving credit to everybody lost, even from the ops. But as Vaughn got bigger and bigger, he let it be known he was on Duck's head. This and his fallen friends, and what hit him the hardest, even dissing his big brother, 
Brick. Vaughn was on a rampage, still heard about T-Roy, even had a Duck lookalike and music videos. Tired of turning the other cheek, Duck decided to fight fire with fire, dropping a crazy diss called Dead B-Words, where he talked about the Alps being hit and dissed a lot of their fallen soldiers. Between this and Exposing Me remix with him and Ruger, it was almost like the Chirac War had slowed down just to come back full surface. But Vaughn allegedly wasn't happy with his op, duck touching that kind of money or success, and allegedly decided with his newfound success to put money on Duck's head. Now let's get to the end game. With both rappers now in the mainstream, it was a lot of back and forth going on in the music. And in August 2020, Duck had big things in motion, like his success, finally getting the recognition he deserved, and his son's birthday coming up as well. He was a family man and slowly trying to elevate and separate himself from the streets. On August 4th, he woke up and decided to link up with his girlfriend and go shopping for his son in an upscale, nice area of downtown Chicago, Gold Coast. Knowing he was always in danger, he had his blick on him, but figured he would be in and out. Once he arrived, he was waiting outside of the Dolce and Gabbana store, since they only let a few customers in at a time. At over six feet tall and a known face, Duck stood out and was spotted by somebody who wasn't even really a op. A man named Ralph Turpin, or THF Teasy. See, Duck had family from THF, including his younger cousin, THF Raheem, who had previously lost his life. So not thinking too much about it, he allegedly shook Teasy's hand and kept it moving. But Teasy still feeling some kind of way that Duck used to allegedly smash his baby mother and knowing he was a high priced target, made a call to O Block. While still outside in line, two cars pulled up and a few men hopped out to confront Duck. As he tried to up his gun, multiple shots went off, striking him. Another male customer, even his girlfriend, as she attempted to fire back. Then the cars quickly sped off. It was chaos and disbelief, as even though parts of Chicago was known for violence, the Gold Coast was off limits, with high-end stores and in a nice part of the city. Witnesses called CPD. When they responded, they found Duck laying in the street, suffering from over 16 gunshot wounds, but still conscious. His girlfriend, also wounded, and another male customer. As people watched in disbelief, some felt CPD wasn't in a rush to get Duck the help he needed because of who he was and a known rapper and gang member. Eventually, he was rushed to a local hospital, but at just 26 years old, after finally reaching his full potential, FBG Duck passed away. The drill community was in mourning, and all of Chicago couldn't believe it. For all the cameras, someone was bold enough to pull a hit, broad daylight, in downtown Chicago. But his mother, Miss Sheena, would feel the most pain after losing multiple kids back to back. She was in pain and disbelief after all they had been through. Duck was gone after just shopping for his son. The community wanted answers and a call to action was made. But fans and people that had been following the drill culture knew exactly where to look at. O-Block. As videos surfaced of King Vaughn buying chains for his people right after the situation. It was speculation it was a reward for them getting FBG duck out the way and hitting FBG with a devastating blow. But it was all hearsay. Vaughn would continue to make music, but ironically, his life would come to an end just a few months later in Atlanta. After a fight with fellow rapper Quando Rondo, he himself was shot and unfortunately would not survive. Chicago had taken two major blows, but as informants, CPD, and the feds worked together, they would link surveillance video and other information to O Block killing Duck. Claiming a rental car was seen leaving O Block and another car registered to a member. The feds would come with a RICO, snatching up multiple names and members, including known faces from over there like Marcus Smart, aka Muwap, who was with Vaughn all the time even until the end. Kenneth Robinson, Charles Liggins, to Carlos Offering, Christopher Thomas, and Ralph Turpin. The case gained national attention, and people even started calling them the O-Block Five, excluding one THF member 
who allegedly had something to do with it. Teasy. While in custody, information started coming out. And CIs or confidential informants who wanted justice for duck. The informants knew both sides and was working with the feds. Test messages, Instagram posts, the getaway calls were all enough for charges of murder and the aid of rack of turn, conspiracy to commit a hit, and other charges to stick to the game. I won't go into the court dates as we all have been saying the trial was crazy and all over the internet. But with so many witnesses and evidence, eventually all people charged or recently found guilty and are scheduled to be sentenced in August of this year. The situation was so brazen, even for Chicago, that not only did Duck's people want justice, but the whole community. Really, everybody lost. So many young lives and names I didn't mention for the sake of time. This video could have been five hours long. So much talent and people gone who could have changed generational curses in their friends and family lives for good. I love to see anybody from my same type of environment come up and be successful, no matter what they are doing. Even though I don't know none of these young men personally, every time I opened my phone and saw a name, a part of me was hurt, another brother gone. It could have outgrew their circumstances and had a chance for a better life. The cycle just keeps repeating itself. I send my prayers to Mama Duck, all Duck's family and friends, and all of Chicago's fallen. To the kids out there, death in jail is real and it's nothing to glorify. Once you are gone, you are gone. It might seem cool looking at somebody else's lifestyle thinking you want to do that. But as you hear in this video, the price of the streets is expensive and nobody wins at the end. All sides took L's and shared blood and tears and there's no coming back. I will end this here since I'm sure this is my longest ever video. Hopefully y'all understand the streets love no one and are not fair at all. So remember, we got to succeed not to fail. So we won't be just another hood tale. Yeah, man. I'm going to end this video right here. Rest in peace, FBG Duck. All the people that lost their life in Chicago. All the rappers. All the people that won rappers. You know, it's a lot going on in that city. Just like my city. Just like a lot of other cities around America. But yeah, I ain't going to talk too much more about this one. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. I appreciate you if you made it to the end. This is another episode of Hood Tales. It's your boy Tony two times. Love, fam. I'm out.